So next we look at the passive collection. Now, what do, you, what do you mean by passive collection? Now, passive collection means after the attack occurs. This is after. Okay, so earlier slides we talked about before. This is after. Now, user must collect data, analyze attacks method, and also the vulnerabilities, and also to, quite, to try to rectify the situation and to minimize the impact. So these are some of the data collection method. So first of all, Okay, there's our collection we can actually perform packet capturing okay so later we talk about some of the commands or maybe some of the tools and the second thing is we can also perform what we call port mirroring or maybe we can also perform something called the logs collection so in log collections we have network device logs and also the operating system logs okay so let's look at the uh, example for the first one packet capture commands All right so this is the example of a switch which is in Huawei switch where we can actually type the command called debugging OSPF event so debugging as the word suggests is to try to debug the problem so problem has occurred and we try to understand what happened okay and so here we can see we can observe there's a down to init init to two-way init to uh, two-way to x start I start to exchange and etc etc so from the logs from the debugging logs we can roughly look at the uh, the status of for example in this case OSPF routing protocol and also we can uh, inspect uh, debugging OSPF packets so packet is about what kind of packets has been received by the OSPF and also the neighbor okay so we can also use tools like Wireshark Okay, so to perform the uh, uh, the collection of the, the packet. Now, usually Wireshark, well, we have to work together with the uh, the port mirroring function. So port mirroring function is something like we can activate one of the unused port in our switch to actually mirror whatever the content which is uh, the packet which is entering or going out from the from other ports and mirror a copy to the uh, we call it the mirrored port and after that the mirror port will then be connected to a PC or to a laptop which is running on the wire shark so, so this wire shark can then collect all the packets and then we will try to analyze the uh, result and from this analyzed result we can tell well, what went wrong what kind of packet that's supposed to receive and we didn't receive so this is the example of a very good uh, handshake of a, of a OSPF between two neighbors so this is the example of the Wireshark collection packet and so here we can under, uh, we can un understand uh, from which IP sending to which IP destination what kind of packet is running but this is actually packet by packet okay we can also look at the uh, you know the, the details of the packet and uh, to try to understand the more detail of what is in the packet okay. so port mirroring is the one that we, I just mentioned so port mirroring enables the device to copy the packets passing through a mirrored port and send them to a specific observing ports for an analysis and also for monitoring so these are the, the few words okay so first of all we call mirror port which is the, the source port and this is called observing ports so this is the one that I just mentioned that we can actually add in a laptop or a computer which is running on Wireshark and by the way Wireshark supports uh, on the uh, Windows, uh, Windows OS, Mac OS and also on the Linux OS so this laptop can be running on what kind of uh, the above uh, OS that I just mentioned and then uh, the, the mirroring will cons constantly sending a packet to the monitoring device All right. so the next method is we call the network device logs so this is example of a UHG 6330 firewall which is one of the Huawei uh, firewall device it supports logs and also reports 
When the hard disk is unavailable, you can only view and export the system logs and also service logs. So here's the example comparison between hard disk unavailable and hard disk available. Now when we mention about hard disk unavailable and available, we literally means on the hardware itself, uh, there is a hard disk slot on the USG, uh, not all, for all the models. So this is an example of the 6330 model that supports the hard disk slots. So we can actually put in a hard disk or maybe uh, some of the flash card that once the system detected there is a there's a hard disk slots, it will actually start to collect all the logs into the hard disk. Okay. So here's our example before and after. So before we can only see there is a system log, service log, alarm information, but after we add in the hard disk, we can collect so many other logs, including uh, threads, traffic, URL logs, um, user activity logs, policy matching logs, and etc. etc. So firewall firewall logs format. So these are the log formats supported by the firewall. So first we have the binary. Now session logs are typically output in the binary format and consume few network resources. Such logs, however, cannot be viewed on the firewall. You have to export them to the log server. Now later we talk about what is a log server. And that, the next one is called the syslog. Now syslog is, is a standard uh, kind of a, a log format. So this is, uh, uh, we can actually set the session logs, packet loss log, system logs are typically generated into, into syslog format. And usually for syslog format, it's actually displayed in uh, plain text. So we can export the file out, we can actually use any of the text viewer like notepad to view the contents. And the next one is called the NetFlow and the data flow. So the firewall can also export session log in the NetFlow formats to log to a log server for administrator to analyze the IP packet IP packet flow on the network. So this is more concerned about what type of packet which is flowing through the uh, the firewall. Okay? And also we have the data log which is service log uh, generated in a data flow format. Um, so that they can be viewed on the log server. So this here is the example of the uh, system logs. So we have monitor logs and after that system logs. So you go to this system logs and here we can see uh, the uh, system logs are typically uh, they have uh, columns, severe, uh, security level, log types, the time, the uh, log source is coming from uh, what kind of source, and also the description of the log. Okay. And this is the uh, service logs, right? So service log is about the uh, okay, what kind of uh, services uh, being attacked. So for example, this is the uh, IP spoof attack has been detected, and what type of the log is mentioned from here. And this is the alarm. Okay, so alarm are typically like we have the warning, we have the uh, uh, we have the uh, critical alarm uh, for example like we have the uh, IP conflict uh, so this is when this is one of the very uh, severe okay kind of a uh, warning and all this will appear at the uh, alarm okay. so next is uh, we could also sometimes collect the operating system log for example Windows so to collect the logs from the Windows we can click on the start and then right click on the computers and we choose uh, manage okay and uh, we select uh, system tools uh, event viewer and also we go to uh, windows logs so here are some windows logs that are classified into now windows log are classified into system logs application and security now the normal system logs will contain most of the uh, the system activities logs Application is more towards the, the application which is installed on the Windows and they will start collect a lot of logs. And security log is about the uh, the user authentication, who logs in and who logs out from the system, who failed password and etc etc. Right, so here are the example. This is system logs. Uh, it records event generated by the operating system components including the breakdown information and data of the driver. 
system components application software so the location of the file can be found in this uh, directory and this is applicable to Vista Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10, Server 2008, 2012 and application logs are including uh, events mainly about the program running recorded by application or the system programs and this is the location of where can we find the, the file and finally we have the security logs this is about security audit events what is the login logs object access logs okay uh, process tracing logs privilege usage account management policy change and system events okay the file can be found under here okay so the next is that we can also look at the uh, location and we can also change so if you click on the uh, uh, the security logs we then go to properties or you can right click security properties and this is where we can monitor we can observe where the location is and we can also sometimes check the maximum set the maximum log size and also what to do when the maximum size has reached do you want them to uh, override the older event or do not override and etc etc so this is a log windows log and the event types so typically we receive like information type or warning as we saw earlier and sometimes we see error and successful audit and also sometimes we see a failed audit all right so windows log formats okay so so this is a typical uh, windows uh, uh, logs so let's say we click on one of the events here and you can see this is the header and the header is about okay what is this category about this is about uh, lock off and uh, this is an uh, audit successful that means somebody successfully logged out from the system and who is the detail the details of the user this is about administrator logging out the successful way okay 